And what I want to show you in this video uh, is how to separate a piston from a connecting rod. Now, once you get these out of the engine, uh, it may seem um, pretty simple and obvious when you when you take a first look at it how to separate these two. But actually, uh, it doesn't often it doesn't go as smooth and it's not as easy. Uh, the first thing before doing the before separating the the piston from the connecting rod, you have to know is whether you have a fully floating piston pin or if it's a pressed fit piston pin. Uh, if your piston and connecting rod uh, came out of a 7 rib 4AG big part, you most likely have a fully floating piston pin. Uh, if your uh, piston and connecting rod assembly came from a 3 rib 4AG, then you may have a pressed fit uh, piston pin. If you have a pressed pin piston fit, piston fit, piston If you have a pressed pin, uh, piston pin. Uh, try saying that fast. If you have a pressed pin piston pin, pressed fit, pressed fit piston pin, uh, you will need a machine shop to remove it from your piston. You you cannot do it uh, DIY. You cannot do it at home. If you have a fully folding arrangement, uh, like I have here for my seven rib four AG you can actually move it at home. Uh, the first thing you want to do, this is obviously a used piston from an engine, the first thing you want to do is just give it a very brief, a very short little clean. I use the obvious thing, WD-40, and to just clean it out a bit. That should be enough, nothing too much, just to get the loose dirt and grime off it. What you want to do then is get a set of uh, needle nose pliers, those are it, and you want to remove the snap rings because this is a fully folding piston, it has snap rings on either end preventing the wrist pin from coming out. You'll get the needle nose pliers and you can see these two little uh, parts of the snap ring, you'll grab them which are needle nose pliers, squeeze and get the snap ring out. You will do the same thing on the other side of course. Sometimes it takes just a bit more effort. And there we go. Now, in some cases, uh, the wrist pin actually comes out just like that, but most often it won't come out easily. Even if you, what you need to do then is is hammer the wrist pin out. And now, don't use anything uh, obviously. Don't use anything that has metal, that is hard, that is tough, because you may damage the piston, you may break the piston, you may damage the wrist pin. The first thing you should do is try cleaning out the area where the snap ring was because they may be accumulated dirt and grime and whatever preventing the, the wrist pin from coming out. You will then need something that actually uh, that fits into the wrist pin but doesn't come all the way through uh, because inside there's a part of the wrist pin that is a bit more narrow than the wrist pin itself. So either something like this, you see it doesn't fit all the way through or either something like this. These are both, this is rubber and this is plastic, so uh, either of these won't damage the wrist pin. Now the next thing to what you want to do is uh, take these and get a nice hammer. This is maybe a bit overkill, but uh, you should do a thing and try hammering it. Hold it steady and try hammering it. Uh, now, sometimes, again often, even this won't help, and the wrist pin won't move at all, it won't budge. What you need to do then is actually get some boiling water and boil this in water for a few minutes to get the piston to expand and get the wrist pin out. The piston actually expands at a faster rate than the wrist pin and once it warms up it expands more than the wrist pin and you can get the wrist pin out. Now let's get some water, let's boil it and get it out. Okay, here I've got some water. Now this looks very kitcheny, but actually you would never think that a piston is going to go in it. So I'm going to heat it up 
and bring the water to a boil. Okay, once the water is almost uh, to a boil, you'll get the piston, you'll grab a shop rag or whatever rag you have, grab it by the connecting rod and dip it into the water. Don't let the bottom of the piston touch the bottom of the, of the pan because that is a bit too hot and I think it might damage the piston. Maybe it won't, but hold it just a bit over the top and hold it in the water for a couple of minutes. Why did I tell you to grab the shop rag? Uh, is because uh, the heat is of course transferred to the metal and the connecting rod gets really hot and you basically can't hold it. So what you need to do is to hold it in here for maybe two or three or four minutes. Yeah. Okay. After a few minutes, be careful, the steam is hot. Get the piston, you'll get a bit of the, to prevent the water from dripping and get a piston away from the pan. Yeah, turn it off, remove the water from it. Have something ready. Yeah. Drip the water out. And have something ready to transfer the piston to it. Okay, the next and final step is to get the piston. Be careful, the connecting rod is pretty hot now. Take your pin or whatever you have, push it inside and hammer. And as you can see, the wrist pin is already coming out. Grab the piston and hold it. Now, without the boiling, this would be most likely impossible. And there you go. One piston wrist pin, fresh out the oven. Well, not really an oven, but hey. You get my point. Okay, I just have to get my little plastic thing that I used to hammer the wrist pin out. There you go. This one. There's the wrist pin. Once the wrist pin is away, you can just take the piston, take the correct connecting rod, and separate one from the other. And voila, there's the connecting rod, there's your piston. This was pretty simple and that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching, please subscribe and enjoy.